Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Almighty Allah, the entirely merciful and especially merciful. Dear viewers and audience across the globe, I greet you with the greeting of Islam, the greatest religion. I greet you with peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and peace be unto all of you. Just a reminder to you and to me, the word assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi, this greeting carries one of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is assalam. So we are so happy that in our daily greeting, a greeting that we use as Muslims every day, at least 20 times that we use, we mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and assalam. And this shows how close, how connected we are, and how much we remember Almighty Allah in everyday life. Uh, as a reminder to all of us that the main theme of these episodes that I present to you is understanding Islam. There is a slight difference here between this word as, or this phrase as a general statement, understanding Islam, and then, then what I present in these episodes. What I present is understanding Islam from the Holy Quran and from the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad So it's not, what I'm saying is not my opinion. I'm saying things that from exactly the exact words from Almighty Allah. One of the beautiful things about uh, this book in particular and this religion in general. Here, when we talk about one job, one task that the book does, it answers the questions that in our mind. If you ask, what is the nature of Muhammad Is he human? Is he divine? Is he half human, half divine? as some people say about other messengers of Allah because they are confused. And perhaps I'll specify one specific episode for that to answer this question. And here the Quran makes it very clear in different places. Here is Muhammad Sallallahu according to what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala teaches him to define himself. So Allah tells him who you are and say to people about yourself. This is in Surah Al-Kahf, which is the surah that almost every Muslim repeats every Friday. So it's very much repeated to remind the Muslims and to remind non-Muslims as well. What is the nature of messengers of Allah? And here, this is the last verse, the last ayah or the last evidence in this chapter. And it says, it reads, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَتِي Rabbihi ahada. The meaning in brief say, Indeed, I am just a human being like you. Plus, I get revelation from Allah. But your true God is one. Whoever and whoever wants to meet Allah, to see Allah in paradise, فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا He or she should do correct deeds in their life and should associate no one with Allah when they worship Him. Now let's divide it into different themes. First of all, Allah is telling Muhammad to say, say, when you are asked about yourself, so say, who are you? So he said that, tell them that you are, indeed I am like you, pure human. P 
plus revelation. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is different from me and different from all human beings in the revelation part. He receives revelation from Allah. Otherwise, he's pure human, like what? Like all human beings, like other messengers, like Jesus, peace be upon, like Moses, peace be upon, like all messengers of Allah. They are pure human plus receiving revelation. So they are like us. They are like me, like other human beings. Definitely they are the best human beings, but still they are in the circle of humanity. They didn't go to any. Humanity plus receiving revelation from Allah. In other words, they received Jibreel alayhi salam telling them the message that they teach their people. This is the definition of a messenger and a prophet. So this is the this applies to Muhammad, peace be upon him, Moses, peace be upon him, Noah, peace be upon him, David, peace be upon him, Jesus, peace be upon him, all of them. All of them fall into this category of the area of humanity, plus they receive revelation from Allah. But, in other words, they are not gods, as some people may think in other religions. So this ayah corrects the wrong beliefs that people inherited from others without thinking of them. So I'm telling them that if you really look for your Lord, your Lord is one and he is not human. He is divine and he is one. In other words, all the rest that you think that they are gods, they are not true gods. The only one, his one God, whose name is Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, what is your task in order to reach paradise safely? You have to fulfill two things in your belief. In any act of worship, whether it's prayer, whether it's fasting, whether it's uh, performing hajj, whether it's paying uh, dues, paying uh, zakat, in any act of worship, whether you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you something, in any act of worship you do, you have to fulfill these two conditions. If you don't fulfill one of them, it's wrong. It's, it's not acceptable. We have to, you have to do it amalan salih, correctly. What is correctly here? Cordi uh, cor uh, uh, correctly according to your father, according to what you have learned at school and university, according to your community, according to your madhab. No, 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 no. It's according to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You do it according to what? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has had done it. So when you ask somebody, how do you do it? Why do you do it that way? If the answer is, because I saw my father doing it that way, this is not acceptable. If the answer is, because I saw the imam in my area doing it that way, this is not the right answer. The only answer is accepted, which is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, I do this because this is what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had done and I have the proof for that. This is the hadith or this is the ayah of the Quran that shows us Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 100% had done this. So this is doing the righteous deed, doing the right deed, doing the correct deed. So you have to do it according to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what he had done. And I will explain, elaborate on this little bit after I explain the second one. And secondly, is the second condition, as we said that, in order for any act of worship that you do to be accepted by Allah, is that it should be sincerely directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You didn't do it for the sake of showing off. You didn't do it for the sake of Allah and someone else, no. It should only be done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Now let me go to the first part. How do you do it correctly? There are some five conditions here, and you yourself, when you learn them, will be so happy because they will help you to make this judgment. Did I do it correctly or not? You have to apply these rules. When, how many, where, the quality of it, and the type, the type of it, the kind of it. Again, when, I'll explain it. When you do an act, to do it correctly, okay, let's say when we do Hajj, can we do Hajj in Ramadan? Everybody, I'm quite sure that is smiling because Hajj does not fall in Ramadan. So you cannot move the time of the Ibadah from this time to another time. You have to do it exactly on the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do it. Cannot, can you fast Ramadan in Shawwal? No, you cannot. It has to be done in Ramadan. Right. Can you fast at night instead of uh, day? No, you have to do it through the day from the time of uh, Fajr to the time of Maghrib, almost. From the time of sunrise to the time of sunset, almost. From the dawn or until the time of Maghrib. So now, this is the issue of when, the time. The place. It has to be done in the right place. For example, Hajj. Can you do Hajj in Medina, Munawara? No, you cannot. Can you do it in Istanbul? You cannot. Can you do it in Cairo? You cannot. Can you do it in UK? You cannot. It has to be done exactly in the right place that Muhammad Sallallahu had done it. And so on and so forth. So when we apply these five uh, conditions, we know that we are doing it correctly, meaning according to the traditions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu The time, the place, the number, how many rak'ahs, Salat al-Dhuhr is four. You cannot make it three, you cannot make it five. And the kind of it, when you are supposed to pay zakat al for example, zakat al-fitr, you cannot pay it, uh, for example, from the animals, uh, from the cattle. You have to pay it from the food of the people in the area that you are in, right? and the quality, the quality of how you do it, how you do your prayer. You cannot do sujood before ruku'a. So it has to be to match the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad This is one condition, amalan saliha, and the other condition is to be sincerely directed to Almighty Allah. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for helping me to give this mission, and I ask everyone, inshallah, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us to be Muslims and for helping us inshallah to continue straighten our Islam until we die and we meet Allah on the day of judgment. Ameen, ameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.